Well, hello everyone. This is Dr. Amig, your friendly rheumatologist from Onabridge MD. Today, I want to talk about a recent article that I read in Nature that's talking about the GLP-1 agonist. Uh, you may know them under the name of Trudicity, Munjaro, or Wigovi. Uh, they are those new drugs that are absolutely incredible to lose weight uh, if you are a diabetic patient or if you have um, obesity or overweight with other comorbidities. And um, we know that those, those agents uh, really help with weight loss, really help with preventing worsening of diabetes, can actually prevent heart issues, can prevent kidney issues. They are extremely powerful. And uh, it turns out that uh, there's more and more studies that are showing that they have an anti-inflammatory effect. Um, so I'm going to repeat this. They may have an anti-inflammatory effect. So you have heard me talk a lot about the fact that fat tissue is pro-inflammatory. So we know this. Uh, and so I'm going to just talk about three things. One, why, uh, uh, why it is important for us to know the fat tissue and how that is in pro-inflammatory. The second is the mechanism of action of GLP-1 agonist, and I think it's really important. And the third one is um, what this Nature paper was uh, talking about, because um, uh, I think that's extremely interesting for everyone. So number one, just very quickly, uh, when you have adipose tissue that is pro-inflammatory, if there's too much of it, it actually causes inflammation. And it actually makes more and more sense if you think about it. Cancer, cardiovascular disease, well, any inflammatory arthritis, all of this is caused by inflammation. And we know that if you are overweight and if you have obesity, you have more risk of cardiovascular disease right? Like having an MI, a, a, a one of the risk factors is actually being obese, right? You can, you have more risk of psoriatic arthritis as well as rheumatoid arthritis, which are both very inflammatory arthritis if you are obese. And then you have more chance of cancer if you are so obese. So those are like free that, That's just example. I personally, as a rheumatologist, I think everything is due to inflammation. Like we know that some uh, some cancer can be caused by inflammation. Like really, when you look at it, it's like everything is uh, every sort of almost every single issue is caused by inflammation. But I'm probably biased <laughs> from the rheumatologist perspective. But yes, yeah, so this is important from a uh, from uh, inflammatory like and rheumatology perspective. If you are obese or overweight, you have more inflammation and so more severe condition. Now. Let's talk about the GLP-1 agonist. So Trudicity, Monjaro, Zebbond, uh, Saxeda, there's so many of them, right? And I've been using uh, some of them I, almost as soon as they came out because psoriatic arthritis patients, it's really hard to get them to lose weight when there is a lot of pain. And um, uh, so it's, I see more psoriatic arthritis patients with overweight and obesity than I see rheumatoid arthritis with that. And I have had a patient who had uh, tried many different treatments for the psoriatic arthritis, and we didn't get to remission. And we were almost there, right? It's like you're 75% you're, you're better, but you're not at 98% better, which is really what I want, <laughs> what I want for you. And what it is, is that then those medications came and they are so incredibly powerful in terms of the studies that they are, that, that they've done are really powerful in diabetes and in uh, obesity. In diabetes, right, it prevents cardiovascular disease. It prevents renal disease. I mean, we actually think that it's going to change how people uh, like it's going to probably change the uh, the life the life expectancy in the U.S. because uh, there are so many people who have diabetes and who are obese, and now thanks to those drugs, we can um, take better care of their diabetes and of the complication due to obesity and diabetes. So, uh, just I'm sure you've read it, but like I just find it very interesting how it works. Uh, GLP-1 agonist. Um, are basically creating uh, two main 
uh, two main things. One with this peptide, uh, which is just a little a, a little protein, basically, it goes into your gut and it's going to distend the gut. So this is without food. It go, it going to uh, distend the gut, and so you're going to have this sensation of being full. And then the other way is that it goes into your brain and it it actually uh, what it stimulates in your brain the sensation of satiety as well. And so you're feeling full and you have a sensation of satiety. And so then you don't want to eat more. In addition, so this this those are like two really cool axes. But in addition, there is also. Uh, a mechanism of action onto the pancreas, onto the heart, uh, onto the liver. And we know that it basically uh, helps with insulin resistance because it's basically going to act as if it was uh, doing the work of insulin so that you can, you know, basically um, uh, have a better metabolism uh, thanks to it. So you're metabolizing better uh, every single food. So now that you know how it works, now that you know that basically uh, um, adipose tissue is pro-inflammatory and you make adipose tissue by eating too much glucose, basically, <laughs> because you're, you're just basically you're, you're eating and it just keeps piling. And one way to keep that pile is uh, by creating fat. So now that you know that, you're going to tell me, well, okay, of course it's anti-inflammatory because you're losing weight. And if you're losing weight, then you're losing fat tissue. And if you're losing adipose tissue, then it's going to decrease the inflammation in your body. Absolutely. That is absolutely true. There is, it's, it's a probable hypothesis that works by itself. Except that doesn't explain it all because we are seeing... Uh, an anti-inflammatory effect, even when you're still obese, even when you're still overweight. And we shouldn't see that. We should still see pretty high level of inflammation. And we're starting to see that there is an anti-inflammatory effect by itself with those medications. So how cool is that? So now I'm just going to tell you the patient that I was telling you about that were um, not achieving remission with um, just the medication for psoriatic arthritis, we tried those drugs and 30 pounds later, when they've lost 30 pounds, uh, turns out they have no more pain. And I've always wondered like, and they were still overweight. And I've always wondered like, was it due to the drug? Is it a placebo effect? And now I'm wondering, is it the anti-inflammatory effect of those drugs? Or is it a combination of all of those three? So I'm going to put the, uh, that you're going to see it's like one page, but it's super well researched. It's very well done. And I think you will love reading about this. Um, so read, read the, the, the paper on how uh, we're looking at this anti-inflammatory effect in other conditions. They are looking at it in the brain, so Parkinson, Alzheimer, um, and uh, and I think very soon we're going to look at it in psoriatic arthritis as well as rheumatoid arthritis. Everyone, this is such an exciting time. I'm not pushing medication. You can absolutely get anti-inflammatory effect when you're using yerba mate. Yerba mate is actually considered a natural GLP-1 agonist, so non-smoky yerba mate because you don't want uh, smoke it. That's carcinogenic, so that there's a risk of potentially inducing cancer if you if you take something smoked. Uh, so take the non-smoky, non-smoked uh, yerba mate. But that is considered a natural GLP-1 agonist, so why not? Um, and then. Yeah, you know, as always, meditation, visualization, exercise, uh, uh, surrounding yourself with love, those are anti-inflammatory. But I think, no, and I think it's really cool to have more tools in our toolbox. And I'm so excited to be a physician in this time. And I think all of us can be excited to be potential patients in this time. Um, yeah, I really hope you enjoyed this uh, this uh, today's episode. I'm very excited to share this. And I will see you next week. And until then, you can uh, watch more, listen more, and uh, read more blogs on onabridgemd.com. And you can also look at the Rheumatology 101 Live. And then come work with us. We're still open for new patients. It's starting to be less and less, uh, less, and less uh, open, but we still have availability right now. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.